Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Farming Simulator. Back on Automolks. We bumped up our cows between what we had, what we bought, and what matured. We're up to 95 now. I'll be right back. I'll grab a drink. So, we got our cows bought, basically. We have 95. I'll probably just let the rest of them mature for now, but we'll see how things go. But, we, uh, today we got to get started. We got to feed them. So, we got to mix some feed. Probably got to mix a couple batches. We got to get them grass. Then we're going to get started on chopping if we got time. Um, if not, the chopping video, chopping with some more corn will be uh, the next episode. So, let's get rolling here. We're going to get out. We're going to feed our cows here. So, we got to get them fed. I'm running out of food. That's why we're up so early in the morning. Uh, so we got a lot of batches, a couple batches to feed to make, and we got some shit we got to get done, so. And we want to put some, I found out you can put straw in the freaking silo and we'll turn it into silos. So, before we get too far on that, before we chop, I want to pull some out of this bunk. Because you cannot pull out of it until it is completely, um, <coughs> excuse me, until it's completely fermented. So you can't pull out until it's all done there. So I want to go ahead and get that done um, and all that. So we're going to pull out the upright today. Get this mixed up because right now I don't have another conveyor for um, pulling out of the bunk. So, and rather than have to waste time, we'll get that done right now. Since the cows need to eat, we're gonna come back over here because I want the TMR kind of more or less square with this and leave the tractor on an angle so you can get at it and we got on the struggle bus today apparently kick this on so we'll have to, that is the one nice thing about these tractors typically is you can get in and out both sides with the cab, that kind of is a hindrance. So we're going to go get our bales first, <laughs> and since I'm lazy as shit, <laughs> we are leaving the bale spear on one skid steer and the bucket on the other. So. See if we can get two bales at a time here. We might just be able to do it. <laughs> More than one way to fuck a chicken. I mean, skin a cat. <laughs> and I think our elevator is probably going to be kind of half ass in the wind here. Maybe not. But this is nice because now I won't have to... Ah! 
I won't have to uh, put the bucket up as much. I got all kinds of frickin' straw shredded up for this. I got like 80,000 units worth of straw. Um, whoa! Apparently you get hooked on the edge of the concrete here. <laughs> some of this cleaned up here on the outsides first so it's not spilling off into the gravel here but yeah we we definitely got our cows um, brought up that we need so we're probably going to end up having to make some more hay at some point because of this number of cows we're going to need we're going to need some more more grass and we got plenty of freaking straw <laughs> plenty plenty of straw so Yeah, we, we definitely got to get these cows fed because we're <laughs> we're out of uh, spot out of freaking TMR. So that's gonna go ahead and do it. I should open up this door so I can just drive right through. So now we're going to go over, first we got to go over to the dairy cow barn. First we're going to go over this way. Oh shit, I should have went the other way. That's alright. Because we're going to go in this way, that way we don't have to sit there and open up gates and shit. I only have the one door to worry about. So. And try not to hit the door. I parked too close or something. It's this door doesn't work when we look this. Nope, got too close to it. So, yeah, we definitely, uh, I'm gonna get a screen of this here real quick. So I bought this. That's a good screen right there. Oh, I'm 
Need food. I think we'll only need two batches. If we gotta make a third, we gotta make a third. Um, so, because they gotta eat. So, now like I said, I've talked about before, sometimes, some farms, it kind of really depends on the farm. Some farms will um, mix every day. Some farms mix every other day. Some farms mix once or twice a week. Um, it just kind of really depends on the farm and how they like to do things. So, this time I won't be able to get two of them at a time. So, I'll have to take one at a time. But, you have to be able to take care of your cows to make some money. You know, it's, it's just how it is. You gotta, your cows are what's gonna make you the most. So you gotta take care of them. So, and that's, it's kind of a proportional thing. Uh, if one goes up, the other one goes up when it comes to cattle and your ground. Because, <coughs> You gotta take care of your land too. You can't just, you know, good ground means good crops. And if you're feeding good crops to your cattle, that's gonna give them best production. That's gonna give them the most milk. Um, and regardless if you've got dairy or beef, um, good healthy cows will give you good, big healthy calves. So that's something you always got to keep in mind when it comes to your land and everything else so that's why you have to spread lime on your hay ground you have to do it um, now with dairy farming you know the uh, barn lime that you put in the in the driveway of the barn there um, that's going to give you some lime there but you, when it comes to beef farming, you definitely have to uh, spread it out on the field. And you're probably going to have to do a certain amount of that um, if you're dairy farming. So, yeah, you, you can spread manure on a hay piece all day long. But if it doesn't have the lime on it, you're, it defeats the purpose. So you have to, you have to have that. Um, then you're just wasting manure or whatever fertilizer at that point. So you also have to make sure there's enough nitrogen in the ground. Now a lot of areas, like in you know the, the Midwest and things like that, where you get enough snow, you don't necessarily have to go and spread a bunch of nitrogen. Um, and especially in the spring of the year when everything is like the snow we got here a couple weeks ago, um, it's it's pretty uh, it's a good thing when that happens, especially when all the ground's thawing out and stuff like that. Granted, enough of the snow is melted and there's nitrogen in that, but it's just nice. It gives it a little bit extra boost when you're. Um, trying to uh, grow your crops there. I mean, it gives it a little extra boost and, and all that kind of stuff, so...
but yeah, it's very proportionate. Um, you take care of your ground, that'll help your cattle. Um, take care of your cattle, that'll help your ground. So, yeah, it's, and, you know, a lot of times, and it just, for me, it, it kind of goes back to, you know, what my grandpa always taught and said, you know, you take care of the ground, take care of your cattle, because that's how you eat. So, that's, that's just the thing, and it's, it don't matter if you're talking about agronomists or any of that kind of stuff. Um, in all honesty, I think in a lot of ways, agronomists and people who, you know, test the ground and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, soil, I guess, what the, I'm not sure what the hell you call them, but soil technicians maybe, I don't know, <laughs> soil scientists, um, you know, agronomy and all that kind of stuff, those guys are kind of the superheroes of farms. Um, so, and there's no, absolutely no shame whatsoever in uh, getting an ground mess out to tell you exactly what you need to do, what you need to be feeding, you know, or, you know, soil people, you know, telling you what you need to get on the ground. There's no shame in that, I and mean, that's a lot of what a lot of people do. Oh yeah, and you might notice my moonshine still over there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's absolutely no shame in that. So good farms will have good crops or good cows. The best farms have good crops and good cows. So you, like I said, it's just it's a balanced thing, and, and sometimes it's hard to find that balance. Uh, sometimes it's it can be a pain in the ass, but if you want to be able to protect your bottom line and be making some serious money, yeah, we need to make third batch. Um, that's kind of what you need to do. Yeah, see, I got a shit ton more bales on there too. Yeah, we might end up just having a video mix in here. <laughs> well, that's all right. But it's. Yeah, I, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that's, that kind of stuff's always fascinating me. It's kind of what I wanted to go to school in the first place for, I just chose to go a different route. And knowing now, if I had known, if I would have knew then what I know now, I would have fucking went and been an agronomist. They, uh, they make some money. So... As well as they fucking should. It's no different than a nutritionist or a trainer for yourself at the gym. It's kind of that way with cattle and hogs and stuff like that. So. Perfect. Did I kick that out? He said. I don't know if I even need those lights because there's enough light here. I haven't had any issues, so. But yeah, I, as far as I'm concerned, agronomists and um, soil experts are they're they're invaluable, really. I mean, they really are. Um, especially when they can tell you exactly what you need to get the best uh, crops and the best cattle. And uh, a lot of it comes down to just experience, knowledge that you learn over the years. Um, but, you know, if you can save yourself some headaches by getting somebody out there that knows exactly what they're doing, to make sure your cows are as healthy as they can be. You know, they're getting all the nutrients that they're supposed to be getting. And, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you can get somebody out there to tell you exactly what you need to be spreading on your ground. 
you know, you can save that headache from doing guesswork and shit. You can just get somebody out there and just tell you exactly what you need to get done. That saves a lot of... Granted, there's, you know, money involved in that and there's a cost involved in that. But in the long run, I think having an agronomist and uh, soil testers and all that kind of stuff out there will save you more money in the long run because they're not going to they're not going to bullshit you they're not going to be like well yeah you know you can do this but whatever no they're going to tell you what you need to fucking do and you won't have to sit there and guess on what you need to do you can just you know get it done basically and you're not going to have the extra cost of oh what if I try this fertilizer what if I try this supplement and, and see what happens which there is still some of that but like I said if you can take out a lot of that guesswork you know that saves you time and money and and all that kind of shit because you might be you know thinking oh this is the supplement they need and in reality they don't you know you're kind of spending money shooting yourself in the foot really so This is definitely a typical dairy farm in Wisconsin. Basically, how it looks, and I'm mixing feed with a 4020. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> we just went complete Wisco on this. <laughs> I think we're gonna take this one over to the freestyle barn. I mean, it wouldn't be much different than, you know, instead of taking to your car to a mechanic, you're just going to swap parts until you figure out what the problem is. And, and that does work. It just costs you more money in the long run. I mean, <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, or you think you need some expert help, go get it. She's gonna cause you fucking problems. All bug eyed and shit. Jesus Christ. Oh, shit, it's done. <laughs> How about that? Alright, let's see what they got. Jesus, we're gonna have to mix another batch? Holy shit. Yeah. Another friggin' batch. Alright. Let's get to it then. Yeah, this this <laughs> this video is all gonna be about mixing feed, I guess. But that's a big part of it, so. Get 
thing I uh, held off on freaking putting more silage in that upright silos. This is about a pain in the ass. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Perfect every time. <laughs> well, second time. <laughs> I cannot believe they're eating this much. Yeah, we're probably going to end up having to make some more bales here pretty soon. Because <laughs> we've used a quarter probably of what we had piled up here. Just about. So. Or maybe a fifth of what we had before. So. That makes it handy when you can take two out at a time. It makes it real handy. Although it looks like a giant set of balls. <laughs> we might not get to the grass in this video. said and done, I think I'm going to end up having 40,000 or 20,000 using 20,000 units of silage used up, so a good thing we got up early this morning because we're definitely burning up some foodstuffs here But yeah, like I said, it's a balancing act. You gotta balance the quality of your feed with the quality of your ground and your crops. So, you can't really have one without the other. You can't excel in one spot and shit the bed in the other and expect everything to work out perfectly fine. Because it's probably not going to. Hopefully this will be the last batch of And if it's not, well, whatever. But yeah, I... I don't know. That conveyor's not really in the way like I thought it would be, so... Going here. But yeah, I'd, it's a lot nicer to, oh, I gotta go make this and stuff and do that kind of thing rather than have this giant, huge stockpile and then kind of twiddle your thumbs for three minutes or for three days. And it does load up the some bitch quick, so that's nice. I think we're gonna take this down to the um, dry cow barn again.
Yeah, I got your food. You hoes. Yeah, some of these cows are stationary and some of them like at the freestall barn will move and stuff like that. It's just the guy I put in the, the map put cows in here. Looks a little more realistic that way. Oof. Good. And we just need to get some more grass. Once we chop corn, we're probably going to have to mix another couple batches of feed. So, yeah, we're definitely not going to be getting to no corn chop in this video. I'm lucky enough to get to the grass. Which, I got to clean that up. Sorry about that guys, I didn't know there was going to be that much feed mixing involved, but hey, that's okay. Haven't really done a good uh, feed mixing video in a while, so... because I didn't have enough grass or they had too much grass some feed and everything, it might be time to haul manure. So, oh yeah, the stationary cars, you can't drive through them. No! 
Seriously? Yep, struggle bus. Now right behind that car, I'm definitely not going to be able to get that. Good enough. I ain't got all day to be dicking and all that stuff. Them dumb heifers will eat it. <laughs> Gave him some grass, anyhow. But that's probably gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this video. So, but yeah, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video and everything else, and, and all that. And so, we'll catch you in the next one. Alright, then, keep farming.